Historically, when I've said that a build is stupid, I meant that despite the literally thousands upon thousands of builds you can create with Destiny's amazing variety of satisfying weapons and abilities, the build a subscriber gave me was bad. But this time, these Hunter, Warlock, and Titan builds are dumb. If this works. Yeah, let's go. Because they are jaw-droppingly strong. Today I'll be playing five builds suggested by subscribers, playing them, and then giving them my thoughts as a doctor in PvPology. I will rate your builds offense, defense, versatility, survivability, speed, and consistency, and then give them a grade for flavor and viability, which tend to sort of be at odds with one another. Starting off, we have a Hunter build from Brayden, who suggested Ace of Spades Lucky Pants on the new Hunter subclass for Solar. After transferring my items from my vault, I modded my armor and adjusted my stats. I want to give these builds the best chance possible of doing well, even though the build creator may not have specified it. These are things like unflinching mods, targeting mods, reloaders, whatever it may be. If any build like this one didn't specify something like, say, a special weapon, I would try to choose something that best suits the playstyle the build seems to be going for. I took my friend Lux and queued into control. At first, when I saw this build, I was just a little bit frustrated that one of the most popular guns of all time, that being the Ace of Spades, was being suggested as a quote-unquote interesting build. Because for me, it's a bit like someone suggesting a slice of white bread as an interesting sandwich option. Is it useful? Yeah, of course. There's a reason it's still universally used and loved, but is it interesting? Absolutely fucking not. But then my eye caught the bit of text in the bottom of this message. Ace can two tap by stacking damage buffs. Have you ever just wanted to win almost any fight? Well, unless your target has quite literally maximum resilience, it is damn near impossible to beat the 0.43 second TTK. That's less than a half of a second. Are you out of your freaking mind? The only thing faster than this is a Redditor's comment correcting a mild spelling mistake. The way this is done is as simple as stacking Ace's Memento Mori perk with a Radiant effect. Obviously, this is best on Hunter as they have access to the new Acrobatic Dodge, which grants this effect. And we can use the new Fragment that gives us Radiant on melee hits to get it up even more often. Normally, when I run a build, I run it once just to sort of give my impressions and because time constraints are low. But this was so damn good, I ran this multiple games. And my friend Lux has declared this his new main stay build for pvp and it is very easy to see why my only suggestion to this build is to go for a little bit more survivability rather than the consistency of the lucky pants so maybe give this a go with like warm husk crown for your own secondary feel free to run whatever you're more comfortable with i think shotguns may be finally falling out of favor so maybe give a sniper or a fusion a try offense nine defense seven Versatility, 8. Survivability, 5. Speed, 5. Consistency, 9. Flavor, A+. Plus. Viability, we are starting it off so strong, S. This is one of those builds that you pray doesn't get popular, but allows you to still abuse it for yourself. But it's not only the hunters that are showing up in full force, because from Labent V, we've got a burn poison stacking necrotic grip warlock build. Now, upon closer inspection of my kit, you will see that I am not using the Osteostrega as suggested. The reason being is that Osteo fucking sucks in PvP, but Thorn will do the same thing this build is looking to accomplish, which is to simulate the summer of 2020 by plaguing the entire enemy team for two years. I can't believe I didn't think of stacking the poison from Necrotic with this burn damage modifier myself. I'm actually kind of mad at myself because holy crap, this thing is strong. To make sure I encourage the enemies to jackhammer their fist into their desk, I ran this with a bow with quick access sling. Simply bow headshot instant swap into the thorn to guarantee cleanup and proc the soul devour trait for future kills on thorn. Close range targets get the pleasure of witnessing your best Roy Mustang impersonation as you snap them to critical health with necrotic grips. And even though we got a map that was far too big for the comfortable ranges of this build, I popped a delicious 7.0 KD. This is one of those builds that is a hybrid effective in both PvE as well as PvP. Warlocks, I know our stuff got kicked in the nards with a steel-toed boot, but trust me on this, this build is top tier. In fact, 
Offense, A. Defense, nine. Versatility, eight. Survivability, five. Speed, six. Consistency, eight. Flavor, S tier. Viability, S tier. I cannot believe we are seeing the legendary double S tier. Normally, I don't give S tier rankings to weapons that are or have been top meta picks, but the fact that this leans into the weapon of sorrow aspect of Thorn rather than its raw efficacy makes me very happy on the inside. But not every build today is going to be an S tier representation because next up was a Dead Messenger Ashen Wake build. As much fun as the Dead Messenger is, it's Definitely not what I think of when I think of quote-unquote powerful PvP weapon. I've been trying for a while to make this thing knock teeth out in PvP, but the wave frames are just so hard to build around because just like glaives, they're slow, the damage is low, and they're kind of inconsistent. The Dead Messenger is the most consistent of the wave frames, but even with that, the bread and butter combo this was going for just simply was not wanting to work for me. Look, I get it. I'm not the best PvP player in the world by any stretch of the imagination, but I try to make builds for those slightly above average players looking to shake it up for themselves a little bit. And this will certainly shake it up, but it, it shakes it up like a, a bag of used cat litter rather than like an unopened bag of chips. It's, it's not it's not good worse than that is that with every kill i get successfully with the combo i'm reminded of how they slaughtered the solar titans roaring flames look at it look at how they slaughtered my boy this is the only blemish on the current spotless record of the subscriber builds we have so don't take it too hard that i'm berating this thing mercilessly offense three defense five versatility three survivability four speed five consistency four flavor b plus viability c minus how about we circle back to Hunters for a build centered around infinite one-shot body shot throwing knives. So funny story for you, I accidentally ran this build before asking for your suggestions just because I was looking for something new and fun to try. So please take a moment to unwind and enjoy the sound of a 4.7 second hang time knife kill. <laughs> oh, heavy. What? I should cap point. My knife still got him, holy shit. Beatus. Oh, Beatus. Let's see it. Got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. How? <laughs> I'm so bad. I just, I just probably on that. Got him. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh no. Oh. New idea. If this yeah, let's go. <laughs> I heard that. I heard that. I heard that. The footage really does speak for itself. The build isn't the most highly competitive of builds, but it's just a straight dopamine factor of enemy unicorning joy. To set this up, all you need is the knock em down aspect and the Ember of Torches Fragment Monte Carlo and the Arthras Embrace. Simply get a few headshots and then cast the spell Yetus McFetus and watch your enemies crumble. Offense, five. Defense, seven. Versatility, six. Survivability, five. Speed, five. Consistency, six. Flavor, A+. Plus. Viability, B-. minus. It's, it's fine. But how about that special ammo nerf? What if we could sort of ignore the nerf? Warlock's got this new aspect called Touch of Flame, which improves most grenades. For our purposes, we are using the upgraded Fusion Grenade, and we are combining it with the slowly getting noticed Devil's Ruin. Let me tell you about this gun for a bit. If you ever just want to say, no, I do not consent to a shotgun rusher, the Devil's Ruin is the weapon for you. Once you learn the subtleties of this strange little gun, it is addictive burying people's faces down. And in case you were wondering, the stream of orange justice this thing spews is enough to drill a hole through a full health super. It is amazing. It feels like a special weapon that takes primary ammo. And, uh, Oh yeah, the, the build runs one shot sticky grenades with Verity's Brow, but this sidearm, uh, I love it so much. I am pretty sure you could put this sidearm on almost any build and I would like it. Seriously, if you haven't tried it yet, you need to. This freaking Devil's Ruin is so good, especially with all of the special ammo nerfs. Offense, seven. Defense, nine. Versatility, seven. Survivability, five. Speed, six. Consistency, eight. Flavor, A. Viability, A. The stickies are just too slow to be useful, but it's a good build nonetheless. If you have a build of your own, subscribe and leave it as a comment. I hope you enjoyed this video. Bless your faces and deuces.